السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Dear everyone, wherever you are, whenever you are uh, Good morning, good evening, good afternoon Actually, uh, sorry for this four minutes delay Because of some technical problems uh, And thank you for being waiting uh, to, uh, to be with us, inshallah Today's talk is what I have delivered last Tuesday in a very simple way. Ramadan is on Tuesday or Wednesday next week, and everybody is looking how to send their money or to give their money to organizations. And uh, every year or every day or every week or every month, that we are actually asked the same question. Uh, to whom we give our money? To whom we give our zakat, our sadaqa, uh, legacies, endowment, uh, giveaways, and vows? This is how people are asking us every uh, uh, year how to give the money. And uh, even last week, when I was delivering a talk about Yemen, actually, uh, somebody put in the chat box the same question again, who are responding to what people are asking. To start with, I'd like to thank uh, my colleague, uh, Ali Shawa, for preparing the media material, the presentation. And uh, if you are with us on the Zoom, please uh, go to the Zoom link to be able to see the presentation. The answer is the most repetitive question I mentioned it to you. The answer, the brief answer is should give it, should give our money to those who are deserving, who are capable to spend it, those that we trust and they have experience, those who have a record of achievements, and those who are always taking the necessary steps towards spending it. This is in a brief to whom we give our money to. To those who are deserving, capable of spending it, how we trust them, have experience, have a record of achievement, and those who are always taking the necessary steps towards spending it. This is in general. This is in general. This is in general. There's too many numbers. If we, if we look at our global initiative now, in, if we look at uh, Europe, if we look at America, if we look at Asia, if we look at Africa, there's too many, too many initiatives. And thousands and thousands and thousands of new organizations being registered every year. If you talk about America, Canada, and Europe, you talk about millions, including the Muslim charities. Okay? And if we talk about this, actually, one of the challenges, the increasing, increasing the number of new registered charity every year by the day, by the minute, by the second. The second challenge the enormity of the problem facing people globally, whether it is the number of the, rise, the rising number of refugees or displaced people, or the people in conflict zones, or the people affected by climate change, or the people affected by poverty, there are millions. There are millions. There are millions. This is the second, second challenge that we are facing. Uh, the third one is to look at the social media. We are not sure that most of the uh, news or the social media is facts. Could be fiction. We don't know. So with these three challenges, we have to keep asking ourselves every now and then to whom we give our money to. There's a third challenge, which is very serious. I can tell you from my little experience over the last 40 years, I can deal with challenge number one, with the rising number of uh, conflicts, 
with the rising numbers of new registered organization, with this sometimes the not accurate information on the social media. But the problem now we are facing is more painful for us is the infiltration of those who are self-seeking opportunists. Self-seeking opportunists. They infiltrate to the social infrastructure of our societies, wearing Messiah's garments and composing social justice symphonies. The certain individuals coming now in the middle of the crisis, affecting people globally, whether it's in Rohingya, or Uyghur, or uh, uh, Lebanon, or uh, Yemen, or Syria, or DRC, or uh, for the Azidis, or for uh, uh, Chad, or uh, Central African Republic, and others. And they are trying to play the role of Jesus, peace be upon him. These are so painful to find some people, opportunists, are infiltrating the social infrastructure of our society and registering organization. So with these four challenges in front of us, my answer to you is in the next slide. We should verify which organization should fund or should support or should give before giving any pound or any real or any dirham or any euro or any dollar. And I've got 18 points as I mentioned before. 38 points today to be discussed with you. Point number one, we should actually look at their website, look at their social media profile and see and discuss their aims, objectives, values, message, mission, and the strategy of the organization. We should know that. It's not like the good old days. Everybody is innocent. Everybody is sincere. Everybody is humble. No. No, no. Look at their aims, objectives, values, message, mission, and uh, strategy. Number two, the operational and professional history. Do they have history? Working where? Working where? What their field of work? Is it inside the country? Is it on a, on, on a village level or a district level or a government level or a national level or global level? And the history, we need to look at it. Number three is the staffs and the trustees. What about them, their credibility and the integrity? Do we know the, the trustees? Do we know who is the executive there? Are they credible? integral or not you should keep looking at the names and behind the organizations number four is the structure the organogram of the organization okay the policies of the organization the procedures and the constitution you have the right to keep leading and knowing this before you give your money to anybody before you give your money to anybody Number five, a geographical area of works and projects. As I mentioned earlier, are they working in Africa? Are they specializing in water, in education, in empowerment, in orphan sponsorship, in uh, livelihood program, in what? In capacity building, we need to know the projects and need to the location, which area? Is it North Africa, West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, Indian subcontinent, in Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, and the other? Where should actually look at all this? Then we should examine thoroughly the financial report and annual report and see who is auditing it. Do they have external auditors to audit the financial report or not? Is the value of the figures of the, 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 uh, the financial report is credible or not? And this is what we need to look at, the financial report and the annual reports. Six points, more to come. Do they apply the humanitarian principles or not? Humanitarian principles like neutrality, impartiality, accountability, transparency, transparency, and good governance. You're right. 
Don't underestimate your power before you give any any pound or euro or dirham or yen or whatever you give. Number eight, is it registered with the government or not? We should not base our donation on personal friendship and relationship with somebody working in the organization. It should be registered in the government, with the government. The admin cost, how much is the administration cost? If some organization comes and tell you, somebody come and tell you, zero admin cost, you have to put, the, you see, you have to put a big question mark. Big question mark. Look at my talk, which I put, posted it on my Facebook and uh, YouTube a few days ago. Zero admin cost found only in heaven, not on earth. Zero admin cost, or somebody is claiming that there are zero admin cost, is only found in heaven because Allah is making everything for us. On earth, there's nothing called zero admin cost. They have to declare if somebody, some businessman or some foundation is sponsoring the salaries, the electricity, there is, they have to declare it because this is in kind donation to the organization because it's a charitable organization. Nothing called zero admin cost. Please, if somebody tells you zero admin cost, you have to ask more questions. Do they have a recommendation letter from governments, from other organizations, from dignitary or not? Very important, it's number 10. Do they have volunteering system? And do we know some of the volunteers to ask them the tricky questions about how they treat volunteers or not? Do they have partners or not? Or they don't want to build any partnership with anybody? It's another question we we'll ask, it's number 12. Keep reading the literature. Keep reading it to understand from the way you look at the images, the photographs, and the statements to understand the characters of the organization. In the executives and in the board level, or on the board level and the executive, do they represent the society gender wise? male and female, age-wise, young and old, culture and value-wise and ethnic-wise to represent what in the country. You see, if you are in UK, UK is um, multiracial, multicultural, multi-faith, multi, 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 multi. And I've got all this. You have to look at the uh, component actually who is working and who is making the decision. Do they represent the society or not? It's participation in different platforms, initiatives on national, regional, and global levels. There's some big events happening. Are they joining hands with other organizations or not? Are they or not? This is another question which you need to ask as well. Uh, are they supportive and advocate for humanitarian issues such as such as Uyghur in China, such as Rohingya in India, uh, sorry, in, uh, in Myanmar, such as Kashmir in India, such as uh, Kashmir in India, such as Syria, such as Yemen, such as Lebanon, such as, as I mentioned, DRC or uh, uh, Central African Republic and other as well, do they stand for these issues or not? The relationship between, with them, between other organizations, is it complementarity or competitiveness? Is it competitiveness? They want to be before the others, to take the fund before the others, or they're complementing the role of the other organizations. Number 18, it's philosophy of thinking, theological, ideology, manners, and culture. All these 18 points, dear my friends, my colleagues, my brothers, my sisters, you have to keep asking before giving any money to anyone 
who can shed tears and make you excited. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. And more. You can change these 18 points into 5 or 6 or 7, or you can make them 30. Because what I'm saying is my experience and it's not a Quran or Bible or Torah. Uh, slide, uh, Ali. There's some more warning, as you can see it in the coming slides. Which organization we should be very careful of taking a back step and not working with them yet. Have to be very careful to uh, work with them. Very careful to work with them. Number one, those who claim that they are the best, the first, the largest, the strongest, and the everlasting, and showing all these signs of arrogance. If you find me extremely arrogant, you have to take a back step and give me advice. And I'm telling you, don't give me the money. Unless I change my arrogance into humility. Showing the humility and being humble. Because I'm dealing with poor people, money. I shouldn't behave like an arrogant individual who said, I am, I am, I am, I am. No, no, no. This is number one. Number two, as I mentioned in the first part about the people who claim 0%. Also, you have to freeze. Tell you think and keep asking how you cover your admin cost. And if you are satisfied, give money. If you are not satisfied, give it to somebody else who can actually be honestly be transparent with you and telling you I take five or 10 or 20 percent of the donation. Those people also who claim zero percent from zakat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divided zakat into eight categories, one of which is which is to be paid for the people who are collecting zakat. Okay, I'm, next week I'm doing some talk about zakat and especially how to distribute zakat money in English and Arabic, Tuesday and Friday next week. So wait for, for that. The people are saying that 0% zakat, you have to be very careful. Allah in the five pillars of Islam, which is shahada, kalima, the word of tawheed, uh, fasting, uh, per, uh, pilgrimage, uh, uh, prayer, it's personal. It's personal. That's why there's no administration in it. But the only one has the administration is the cat. Why? You know why? Because Allah in his knowledge knew that you people are going to institutionalize the cat to become like an institution or organization. That's why to appoint, he has to appoint people to safeguard, to collect, and spend the zakat. Number four, the backbiters. The people talk, 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 talk. Backbiting you. Back, back to you. Back, 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 backbiting you. Don't listen to them. Don't give them your ear. Don't ever give them your ear by telling you, you see, this organization is so-and-so, and this woman is so-and-so, this man is so-and-so. No, don't give them your ear. In this field of work, the humanitarian work or the charitable work, backbiters are ugly characters. No matter what they say and tainted with sweet nothing, don't listen to them. Especially when backbiters, the, the other organization and uh, other uh, personalities. The organization, actually, uh, those who do not represent societies, as I mentioned before. But instead, they represent a faction, political party, or narrowly jurisprudential school of thought. To represent ideological philosophy not suitable for the local communities. If they represent this, take back step and think before you give money. Okay, don't have regular financial report, audited. I mentioned it before. The organization that you think, that you think they are one man show. I remember when I came here uh, 42, 43 years ago, it was one very big national organization, very vibrant and active. 
This was 43 years ago. It was established before I came. But the chairman or the founder did not let go. He died a few years ago. Rahmatullah may Allah be blessed with his soul. But the organization died before he died. It was what on a national level that shrank and nobody knew about it. So this one man show, which is suffering from the founder or the chairman syndrome, please take a back step and find someone else. The organization who don't have policies, procedures, good governance, and don't apply humanitarian principles. We are living in a world now governed by policies, procedures, and law because of extremism, because of radicalism, because of terrorism, because of the financial regulation, because of all this, because of all this, because of all this, actually, we have to be very careful of looking at our good governance and to have policy for how to be treating young children if they are in a camp or in displacement, how to deal with women in displacement and women refugees, safeguarding and other. All these, we have to have a policy for it. We have to have a policy for it. Uh, a policy for uh, spending cash or carrying cash. All these sort of things has to be there inside the organization before, before you give any money. Number 11, uh, this is very painful. Actually, I'm going to talk about it and please be patient with me. Having more interest in media coverage, not on project implementation and social impact on the site. How? I found certain organization, which I know the name, I know the people running it, I know where it works, I have got good relationship with all of them. When you go to them, you find that they have, they have got 50, 60 employees, or 40, 30 employees working in media and fundraising, or more than that. And when you go to the project division or the program division, you find four or five. I was with some of the organization which did not have human resources, but they have a huge department of media and uh, fundraising. And when they spend, they spend a lot of money on media and fundraising and less money on the project side or the accountability side. This is very serious. This is very serious. I know another organization wanted to win over when they moved from the headquarter country into another country. To be the first and the best and, and spending incredible amount of money on online donation and on social media. Incredible amount of money. And I know their operation in the field near to Nell because they don't have many offices in the field. Be careful. Ask. You have the right to ask. You have the right to ask, well, this money is the money of the poor, and Allah will make us accountable of how to spend this money. Now we know more information about one another. You have no excuse of being fooled. The organization who does not have any partners. Why? Nobody nowadays can work in isolation to others. I mentioned four or five or six problems like Syria, like Yemen, like uh, Libya, like South Sudan, like Sudan, like Uyghur, like Rohingya, like Azidi, uh, uh, victims of Daesh, and like the yeah, and others. Each one of them, each one of them, each one of them, there is no one government that will be able to meet the need of such problem. I gave you the problem of Syria. 11 million people inside Syria needs very, very serious full support and security. Nearly five, six million outside. 
Yemen, 24 million need food supply, protection, health, and, 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 and. Not one government will be able to meet the needs of those people, either Syria or Yemen, or actually in different parts of the world. So partnership is the key for sorting out this problem. Having no partnership, you have to be careful of why. Ask, don't be shy, ask. You're going to give money. You're going to give money. You're going to give money. When you go and buy your own shopping, you want to buy the best, which is the cheapest and the good quality. And you keep asking, going around. With charities, you have to go around as well to maximize the benefit of the money you spend on the poor. The money you spend on the poor. Such organization who claim that they work in tens of countries, 30, 40, and their budget is less than, less than 1 million. On what basis they are working in 20 countries or 30 countries or 40 countries? I was, I mentioned this in my Arabic talk, in Egypt in 2012. And there was in a meeting, somebody, young man, and you know what you're saying? We are working the 26th district or the governor of Egypt. As how much is your budget? So, yeah, I don't know, it's seven, yeah, yeah, it's 32, seven and a half, eight million Egyptian pounds. I said, what? Is this sufficient to work in 26 government? You might not be able even to cover one or two governments. Okay, be careful with those people who claim that they work in global operation with minimum amount of money. Even some of those organizations, you know what? If you look at their financial report, they don't even reach a million, 100, 150,000. So you can imagine that. Uh, look at the board members and their history. Do they have a dubious history before they came to organization? Do they still having a connection with non-humanitarian organizations which might affect the credibility and the integrity of the organization or not? You have to look at this because you'll be accountable to the money you give to such organization. In the world of counter-extremism, radicalism, and terrorism, you have to be very careful because people could get done by donating to organization which actually having uh, some dubious board members. Number 15, board members or executive are benefiting really directly or indirectly from the organization. And I know quite a few. Like what? Like they establish a company, business company, and let this business company to be registered in the name of their sister or cousin or uncle or friends. And they get the contract to the company because they are not a member of, a, a member of the company through his organization. He could be or she could be the chairman, but who is benefiting? The family member. And this is happening. You know, this is happening. Find a way to say, no, I'm not going to give you money. Find a way to find somebody, a political figure in the organization who is benefiting his political party or her political party from the fund of the organization. Find in this organization people who might be affected to a religious group and benefiting the religious group from the fund of the organization. You have the right to ask. You have the right to ask, absolute right to ask. Okay. Uh, having stuck at the organization becomes like a family business. Somebody's employing his relatives, become like sectarian from certain clan, certain group, ethnic group certain racial background, and they claim that they represent the society. No. Family, tribal business, political, sectarian, cultural. No. Keep looking. Why only from this tribe? Why only from this ethnic background, which you are claiming that you are a relief, big organization, actually. 
helping everyone and representing everyone. Also, the organization who are becoming so proud of the schools of thought. We are all so proud of our schools of thought, but we should not be arrogant and keep looking down at other schools of thought, theological schools of thought. No way of claiming that you are X and your school of thought is better than my school of thought. Or I claim that my school of thought is better than you. In the social arena or in the humanitarian arena, there is no school of thought is better than others. We might keep it to ourselves and try to guide people, but we do not claim it. Once we start to claim it, we are doing no justice for our uh, owner of the organization, which are the poor and needy people. Pride is not a character of any humanitarian or social work. Having no succession plans, as I mentioned before, the one man, the one show, the one man stay forever. The one woman should stay forever. So why? If I keep, as I mentioned, this, this individual, which I mentioned his case, case study, he was there for 50 years. I said, I keep in the 70s, and he was there in a very glamorous organization. He died, rahmatullah alayh, in the at the beginning of this century in a dead organization. No succession plan. Why I should be there for 10 or 20 or 30 years? You know, when I left my organization 14 years ago, no, uh, today, uh, 13 years ago, I was there for nearly 23, 24 years. And people were saying, why you leave? I said, what? You keep criticizing political leaders in different parts of the world of saying staying forever. And when I decide to leave after 23 years, you said me stay. Very funny. And you know, people were saying about me, oh my God, uh, they kicked him out. Oh my God, they sacked him. Oh my God, you might have some scandal. There was no, there was no scandal. There was looking out. There was no uh, second. Somebody desired to leave, finish, to do something else. And what I'm doing now is complementing what I've been doing in my first 25 years in my life in the social and humanitarian work. Having no recommendation, and you cannot just be an organization which does not have a relationship with anybody and not have a letter of recommendation from your government, from donors, from societies, from schools, from universities, from dignitaries and others. Also have no registration. These are the 37 or 36 points, which you, keep, you should be looking at it before you start giving any money uh, for any organization. Number 21, is those who spend more money on media campaign. You know media campaign? Each campaign has got its own budget. Okay, especially on VIP. Like now, Ramadan is coming next Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday. I want a VIP to come and promote my campaign, my Ramadan campaign, uh, maybe next weekend. I give them a percentage. So you see my finger? No way. Like I tell this dignitary or this VIP, I give you 5% or 10% or 20% of the income. No way. No way. Either he comes or she comes for free. I think, or if they have uh, like an ask, I can give them what they charge people, but I'd never give them percentage. Never, ever give a percentage. Never. You know why? Because the campaign cost could go up to 20 or 30 percent. And let me take you, as you can see it in the slide, to the administration cost will be like that. A percentage for the VIP a percentage for the project implementation, a percentage for the organization, and the percentage for the campaign cost. Four percentage. 
who have, done, who have seen it, who have seen it being done by others. Ask, especially find a dignitary, very VIP is coming and there, ask, see, if you get somebody like uh, Maradona, for instance, they charge you, how much? You got it? You got the message? All right. This is my message as I always deliver this message at the end of my talk, especially to the young people. My message to you, young men and women, is humanitarian and charitable work became a profession, profession like medicine, like engineering, like uh, botany, like teaching, like uh, becoming a policeman or an um, army officer or a nurse or a lawyer, or like a profession, a profession with it all the policies and the procedures and all the culture of the profession of, of, of the profession itself. Charitable work also is a social, listen to this, please, and write it. It is a social industrial system overlapping with every walks of life in our society. It's a social industrial system overlapping with every, with all the walks of our society. Yeah, because you know, you know what? Humanitarian, you know, if, if you know what is the meaning by soft power and and and, and uh, uh, hard power and uh, uh, soft and hard and rough power. Uh, soft power of a country is the, the most powerful soft power in the country is humanitarian work. Even before media, even before culture, even before fashion even before food, even before art, even before drama. You know why? Because humanitarian work can, can reach anywhere where nobody else can reach. That's how I'm saying it. The charitable work is a social industrial system overlapping with all walks of life in our societies. Young men and young women, listen to this. Also, humanitarian and charitable work is not a profession for home. Of those who have no profession, not because I don't have anything to do, I go out and become a charitable or humanitarian work. No, it's become a profession, exactly like a doctor, medical, or like an engineer, or like a teacher, or like a professor in the university, or a politician, or a businessman or an economist. Humanitarian charitable work also is not emotional improvisation. No, not emotional. We also sometimes use the emotion, but it's not that. Carried out by those who have no knowledge or experience of its framing and guiding tracks. It's not some something to be jumping, uh, crying and screaming, and you don't know what you're talking about. Quite often, people like this go to the mosques or to the religious, other religious uh, places and try to let people cry to raise the fund. Humanitarian and charitable activities, young men and women, is flowing dream. You know when you dream? is a flowing dream in the hearts of the poor. It's flowing dream in the hearts of the poor. It's glittering lights in the eyes of the needy. It's glowing feeling inside the sensations of the oppressed. It's crowding pulse in the souls of widows and renewable hope in the consciousness of the bereaved. I say it again, it's how the poor people look at the charitable and humanitarian activity. It's flowing dream in the hearts of the poor, 
glittering lights in the eyes of the needy, glowing feelings inside the sensations of the oppressed, crowding pulse in the souls of widows and renewable hope in the consciousness of the bereaved. Yes, for you young people, when you come to this field, this is what you need. We, need to, we, we should expect you to feel and understand and to know that. Young people, our responsibility is making this sign, this, this what I mentioned, emotion and dreams and others, making it scientific reality, changing it from emotion and dreams and pulses and sensation and, 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 into a scientific reality, into a scientific reality, into civilizing value, into economical recovery, into educational encyclopedia, and the future path to fill, to build future leadership. All this emotion and dreams and pulse and sensation has to be changed into scientific reality, civilizing values, economical recovery, educational encyclopedia and future path to build the future generation of the future leadership. Charitable activity and humanitarian activity is a manner as well, manner, manner, manner. is a message, is a mission, is a stature, is values, culture, ideological philosophy, building and tightening the weaving of social infrastructure. Say it again. Humanitarian charitable activity is a manner, message, mission, stature, values, culture, and ideological philosophy building, such ideological philosophy building, and tightening the weaving of the social infrastructure of our society, of any society that we're actually claiming that we're uh, supporting. Young men and women, Humanitarian and charitable activity is a partnership. 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 With the poor and the needy who are the real owner of your organization. It's not the donor. It's not the CEO. It's not the chairman. It's not the board of trustees. It is the poor people who own the organization. It's a partnership with them. Young men and women, humanitarian and charitable work is the mean and the objective at the same time. How can it be a mean and the objective? Let me tell you. It's a mean for what? For removing hardship from the needy. Orphans, widows, displaced people, and those who lost the, all the rights to live a respectable life. It's a mean to remove all the hardship from those categories. Poor people, needy, orphan, widows, displaced, refugees, thick, and, 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 and. It's the mean. Help them. And it's objective as well. Objective how? It's to please whom? First one to please him, Almighty, Allah, the Lord. Then empowering the needy. Empowering the needy. Building societies. Establishing peace. Safety, social justice, renaissance, and building civilization. So it goes from hand out for humanitarian work into building civilization. You must objective to please Allah, empowering the needy, building societies, establishing peace, safety, social justice, renaissance, and building civilization. This is humanitarian and social work as a mean and as objective. Also, it is a responsibility. What? If you stand out for the public, it's a responsibility. It's responsibility that the mountains, the earth, the skies refuse to carry, as mentioned in the Quran. But the human being, like myself and yourself, carried it out of ignorance because he, did, he does not or she does not know the enormity of the weight of such responsibility. So it's a responsibility as well. Young men and young women, humanitarian social work, so and charitable work is an access to what? To heaven. 
if we please and the poor and the needy and fulfill our duties. It will be a gate for heaven, for all of us. Also, if it's an access for hellfire, if we fail to carry our responsibility, we'll be falling down to be with the hypocrite at the bottom of the hellfire. So it's an access to heaven, inshallah, for each and every one of you, or uh, an access for to fall in the hellfire. Young men and women, uh, and young women, humanitarian and charitable work is sending uh, the spirit of hope. It's creating the spirit of hope. Sending the spirit of hope into the hearts of the oppressed. Yes, they are coming to help me. Yes, they are coming to talk about me. Yes, they are coming to advocate my case. Yes, they are coming to treat us. Yes, they are coming to bring us to our homeland. It is sending a message of hope into the hearts of the oppressed, bewildered, displaced, marginalized people. It's a message. It's this kind of pulse, pulse. You know, when, you, when our heart beats, it sends the pulses of hope into every, every cell in our bodies. This is my intervention with you today before Ramadan telling you be careful don't listen to me because I talk very nice search 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 what I say and what I do in my organization and please please investigate my organization because you put before putting any dirham or dollar or real or pound or euro in the bank account of my organization. You have the right to do that. And I've got 37 or 38 points. There, you can use them. It's not a Quran by, 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 or, or Bible or Torah, as I mentioned before. It is just some, some experience for you to be guided by. You can take all of them. You can take five of them. You can make them 50 or 60. It's entirely up to you. And I thank you today for being patient with me.